Hello, uh, today I'll talk uh, about how to uh, wrap or, or dockerize uh, your Python fast API uh, with Oracle client in order to connect to Oracle cloud database. You could use the same uh, way to connect to on-premise database, but in my example, I'll be connecting to Oracle autonomous cloud database. Let's switch to my screen and yeah, the, the source code will be provided uh, on a GitHub and I'll post below the video URL to the source code. And I should say that um, I'll be using um, implementation from the previous video where I explained how to call uh, Oracle database uh, and how to expose API through fast API functionality and uh, how to create connection pool uh, to Oracle database with Oracle client. So all the same, all this functionality I'll be using today, and I'll show you how you could uh, wrap this with the Docker container. Okay, so first of all, this is README, and uh, I explain here the list of commands that uh, I'll be showing you. I'll be using Docker Compose to um, create the image and run the container. Then there are se several commands like Docker Images, Docker PS PS A to show. Uh, running containers, and then this is the one which allows you to enter the running container, enter the operating system, and check uh, stuff there if you want. And there's another one, Docker Compose Down, which uh, removes uh, removes container and removes the network, but it keeps the image. Then once container is up and running, you can test uh, fast API from uh, this URL for the port 80001. And there are a couple of environment variables uh, because I don't want to keep uh, sensitive information like username and password inside the uh, uh, image, but uh, rather I want to pass it uh, through parameters. When container is initializing, uh, it will be initialized with the parameter values uh, that you set in configuration. And connect string, in this case, I'm connecting to Oracle Cloud Database using uh, fast connect syntax. And uh, I could provide this connect string and uh, connection is made automatically. And if you are connecting to your own uh, Oracle Cloud database instance, then you would need to update um, uh, ID information over here in the string. And also I should say that um, uh, uh, information how to install uh, Oracle client and uh, Python uh, into this into the container I, I got from uh, from the Oracle examples for for Docker. This one uh, example for Oracle Instant Client installation. I'm using Oracle uh, Linux eight, and um, I'm using Oracle Client twenty one. And th this example how to install it um, on top of Oracle uh, Linux eight uh, slim image. This is what I'm using. This is the installation for Oracle client. And this is another one, uh, another example for Oracle uh, Linux developers, which shows how to install um, uh, Python 3.8 uh, on top of Oracle Linux as well. So this is uh, 3.8, and this is a Docker file example, uh, which installs uh, Python into the container, uh, into the image, sorry. So this is what I'm, I'm using as well. Okay, so let's switch to the to the code, and the same readme is over here available. And first of all, this um, uh, Docker file and this is a Docker Compose file. So Docker file, uh, essentially, you could build um, in this example, you could build a service uh, with all the steps in Docker file. But for the convenience, and if you are building multiple services, it's better to use both Docker file and Docker Compose. And you should think about it like Docker file is uh, uh, like it's like a metadata which helps you to build the image so to assemble the software. And Docker Compose uh, it's another level. It helps you to build container on top of that image, right? Uh, uh, for example, you could provide over here information about port mapping, uh, default command when container starts, which one you would run. Uh, information about the volumes, uh, where you could connect your local operating system uh, folder to the, you can map it to a folder which is inside the container, so that from the container you could access this uh, your files that reside on, on operating system. 
In this case, it's useful because I don't want to copy a security wallet which contains connection information to Oracle Cloud Database into the container. I just refer uh, this wallet from the container uh, and I, I refer it for mapping on a, on a local, uh, local, local file. Then you pass environment variables over here and uh, you can define the custom name for a network if you want. And obviously uh, from Docker Compose, you point uh, for this invoice service, you point from where to get um, Docker files. So in, in this case, under invoice services, invoice service directory. And if you're building uh, microservices application with multiple services, uh, you could use Docker Compose to assemble multiple services and uh, with single run for Docker Compose, you can uh, get them up and running all the services. In this case, just one service uh, to keep it simple. Okay, so uh, for fast API to, to be able to connect to Oracle database, we need to install Oracle client. And this means Oracle client must be installed in a Docker container. So we need to assemble uh, into Docker image, we need to assemble Oracle client and uh, Python uh, as well, so that fast API would run because it needs Python. So we start with uh, Docker file and uh, because I'm using Oracle client, it's uh, way more convenient to base our image on Oracle Linux as well. So because it's kind of uh, the same technology and I'm using slim image, which um, it comes with reduced size and more optimized for production. Then I'm copying this uh, Python 38 model file uh, based on the example from Oracle. Then I'm copying into the image requirements uh, file and requirements file, it, 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 it describes that we would like to install into our image fast API and uh, Uricorn server libraries to be able to serve fast API. Uh, the next step we run uh, Oracle instant client installation and uh, in the next step, then we install Python uh, 3.8 uh, into this Oracle Linux uh, image. Uh, then we install uh, a CX underscore Oracle library, which allows to connect, to, allows to execute um, uh, and connect to Oracle databases from the Python uh, scripts. And one of the final steps, uh, we are installing requirements. So we install a fast API over here and uh, Uricorn uh, libraries to be able to serve fast API uh, and, and uh, serve REST endpoints. And in the last step, we are just copying here uh, source code. So uh, from this folder, we are copying um, source code. Uh, it's the main endpoint over here for fast API and uh, then this um, under invoices uh, script, we have um, endpoints defined. Default endpoint just uh, prints out uh, like a test information. And there's another endpoint called all, it just returns uh, uh, invoices. And if you look into the query, it executes the query, which uh, fetching invoices with total greater than 200. So this is how, it, this is the logic. And yeah, uh, for, Oracle client to be able to connect to Oracle database, uh, we need, uh, for example, we need to point out to the directory where Oracle client resides in, in this environment. And uh, in DB config script, uh, I have all this, um, all the required uh, values are being stored. So we have, we refer to, to the parameter, uh, which is set uh, when container is being created for username and password. Oracle client is being installed uh, as, as it is defined in Docker file over here when Oracle client is being installed uh, in Oracle Linux. It's being stored in, in this directory. So we refer to uh, this path and uh, to be able to connect to database, we're using connect string. And we're passing uh, secure information about our connect string from the, envir from the environment variable. And for the wallet location, we are pointing uh, to the folder uh, in the container, this folder. But actually, uh, if you look into the Docker Compose, we have a volume which says that uh, uh, our uh, folder inside the inside Docker container is being mapped to external folder uh, which uh, resides on our operating system, this one. This means that 
when container runs and it just maps the folders and uh, when you go inside the container to that folder it will show you the contents uh, but really these contents are not available in the container they just mapped from the outside and this is done for security reasons because when you uh, uh, create image you don't want to store and copy into that image um, uh, things like the security wallet Instead, uh, when later you run the container on the runtime, you, you would better refer to an uh, external uh, uh, folder which is outside of the image. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's, let's see how it works. And let's do docker compose up minus minus build. Minus minus build uh, is not essential, but uh, it is recommended in such case when image will be created and if you would have a change in the source content and you would like to rebuild the image if you don't pass minus minus build then image would, would not be changed so it's recommended always to use minus minus build another thing if you want to run it in detach mode when docker compose is finished and when you want to uh, kind of release the uh, control from from the <coughs> from the terminal uh, you could use minus d option then it would be in detach mode so let's let's run it and let's check we are in correct directory. We can refer to Docker Compose uh, and one thing um, because I'm using <coughs> here username and password uh, uh, fake and I don't want to expose uh, real sec secure information. So so I should uh, delete this uh, Docker Compose and the one where I have actual information, I rename it uh, to the Docker Compose. And yeah, this is this file contains uh, secure information. So <clears throat> let's run Docker Compose up minus, minus build. And what this will do, it will go step by step into the Docker file automatically. And it will, uh, first it will install uh, into the image Oracle Linux instance, then it will copy the stuff, then it will install <coughs> Oracle client, uh, Python 3.8, uh, then CX underscore Oracle and requirements. So now it's in, uh, in point 4.4 4 from 8. <coughs> Sorry, uh, it installs Oracle client. It will do a couple of uh, maybe 10 20 seconds, but anyway, it's always fun to watch how it works, especially when there are no, no errors, right? Yeah, so it installs Oracle clients. And yeah, in the next step, it will install Python 3.8. Okay, it should be done. Yeah, it's done. And ne in next step, uh, installs Python 3.8. Yeah, and by the way, uh, when once uh, it's all up and running, you can use uh, Docker Compose to uh, show uh, containers that were created with Docker Compose. They would use. Uh, for example, Docker Compose PS, and this would list containers that were created with Docker Compose, or you could use just Docker PS, and then it would list all containers, not necessarily the ones that were created with Docker Compose. <clears throat> okay, so it's all done. Server is up and running. Application startup complete. And as I mentioned, in this case, we are running uh, not in detached mode, that's why we keep seeing the log. If we would run in detached mode, then when container would be up and running, we would the process would exit and we would be able to use the terminal. In, in this case, we just run in uh, regular mode, not detached. So we can see over here that uh, uh, requirements were installed and all good. So we can explore a bit the, this container and let's go to uh, into the container environment, and we see that there was invoice service uh, folder was created. And if 
I go inside, then uh, I see this is where uh, actual source code resides. Okay. And if I would go to db config and copy the path uh, which points in, inside the container to uh, to the wallet, then if I would navigate over here, list, I'll see that um, I get actually all those uh, wallet files uh, that uh, allow me to connect to Oracle Cloud database instance. But these files are not physically inside the container. They refer through the volume and they uh, reside actually on my main operating system folder. Okay, and now we see that um, Uicorn is running and we could do a quick test. So uh, I could uh, navigate to fast API and I immediately see that uh, once I navigated, initialized the uh, instance of the application, a connection was done. And in this case, a pool of four database connections was created. And this means uh, uh, when a uh, request will be finished, connection will not be closed. It will keep, it will stay open. And next time when the next request would come to connect to database, uh, it will not connect. It will reuse the same connection. And this operation uh, of data fetch, for example, would, would execute way faster because it takes uh, usually a significant portion of time to connect to database. When you're using database pool, we don't need to connect. And yeah, if I would try to execute and get request to get all invoices over here. I get a list of the invoices, like 200, total with 200, uh, 240 and so on. <clears throat> and what I could do, uh, a quick test to show you how you could, when you change the source code uh, and when you work in Docker environment, what you need to do uh, to rebuild this image. All right, so first of all, we can uh, stop and dock and compose down, stop the service. And we go to the file where query is executed and we could say that let's fetch all the invoices with total more than 2000, for example. And uh, compose down was executed and we can see that um, process stopped. Uh, we can check if there are any uh, containers left? No, there are no containers. And uh, we can check images. This uh, image is left, this Katana ML invoice service image is left. And now when we, once we'll change uh, the source code, we change already to 2000. And if I'll repeat the same uh, command, docker, docker compo compose up minus minus build, it will not rebuild the image entirely. It will just uh, use image from existing one and update with this uh, with the change. And it executes uh, way faster than the first time because it doesn't need to download, install anything. And service is up and running. We can go uh, again to, to our UI and we can try it. And this time we see that invoices are returned uh, with totals greater than 2000. So this, this means our change was um, uh, propagated successfully. So thanks for watching and um, hopefully this will be useful to, to the folks who are looking how to build the API with Python uh, on top of Oracle uh, Cloud Database. And in my opinion, if you want to build um, REST API with Python, then uh, you should go with fast API uh, server because it's the, the simplest uh, option probably you would you could get and uh, it's reliable and fast as well. That's cool. So thanks for watching and next time I'll show you how to push this Docker container to Oracle Cloud and uh, have it live online. See you next time. Bye.